Hey boys and girls, I'm uh, here with John Romanelli. Uh, John is uh, in charge of ASX, the, uh, the company that we've talked about in the past. And um, if you look around the corner here, you can see the product that John is uh, cranking out. What we're looking at is uh, a vertical takeoff machine that would be quite a bit bigger than, uh, than anything we've seen coming to market. This would be more like a, um, uh, this is a, a, a totally different kind of vehicle than everybody else has got out there. And uh, so John, what I'd like to do is, uh, is maybe uh, get you to tell us a little bit about what we're looking at yeah. here with that. that yeah, so uh, we're, uh, Sandy, thanks for having me. Uh, it's great to be here at the Cybertruck event and uh, here with the Cybertruck. It's uh, kind of cool to see it plugged into our ground vehicle here. But what, yeah. we've, what we've developed, Sandy, is a modular, multi-mission, uh, vertical takeoff and landing aircraft with <clears throat> collaborative robotic ground vehicle that can basically plug and play different payloads into the aircraft, medevac, cargo resupply, troop transport within a medical or within a, a defense context. Uh, we are on our second uh, Air Force contract, working on our third, but ultimately our vision is to be able to improve the quality of life for people on the roads by elevating cargo, uh, reducing congestion uh, with an emission-free uh, vehicle. We are working on a, uh, a hybrid version for our contested logistics environments. But uh, yeah, this is our, uh, this is our skateboard and uh, <coughs> it's got a modular pod here. This vehicle uh, and this payload pod was, was built in under 18 months. Uh, we teamed up, worked hand in glove with uh, one of my mentors, uh, Man Peter Jung in at Manitron Animatronics and Robotics. And uh, together, our teams developed this, this ground vehicle, which has all-wheel drive, all-wheel steering. It's a transformer, so we can collapse it, pack it, stuff it into a sea container if we need to, and ship it. Mm. But uh, yeah, in so, short, that's what, we, what, what, what we're so up to. So what, what would be the payload on this? How much cargo could you put in there in the way of uh, pounds or tons or yeah. kilos or whatever? So in our block one vehicle, we're looking at a thousand pound payload. Uh, block two, which is a larger set of motors, larger rotor system, will be at 2,000 pound payloads. And with a hybrid turbo generator, we'll be able to go over 200 miles. Hmm. So that's a pretty good range. Yeah, and then... Uh, there's one thing that's unique about this in that uh, when you drop off this payload, you can put a, another pod on and it's already, that's where your battery packs are, is that correct? Yeah, the batteries are currently uh, loaded in the, in the subfloor of the payload uh, so that we can uh, plug and play a new payload with full of cargo with a fresh set of batteries that uh, in, a, in a purely electric uh, scenario, we can you know, get back into business without spending any time on the ground recharging. Mm. Uh, in a, you know, with a hybrid configuration, uh, we can, you know, spend more time in an electric mode by just adding more or less batteries, depending on the, the job to be done, mm. right? It's a trade-off between liquid fuel and, and battery and noise versus yeah. more of a stealth mode, yeah. if you will. Yeah. So you were, you were telling me that, um, You've already got some uh, some funding from uh, the Air Force, I think. That's correct. Yeah. And uh, there there may be more to come down the pike. Can you elaborate a little bit on that? Yeah. So we have uh, the company was very fortunate in that we were able to land the coveted uh, uh, contract. It's an other transaction prototype agreement with the United States Air Force uh, as part of their Agility Prime program. We took the last seat in the program. Mm. There are very few companies, I, I believe it's under a dozen, I don't know the exact number, that have been uh, inducted into this program. Uh, we're a portfolio company now, which means we have access to all of the United States Air Force's uh, research, development, testing facilities, which is a huge savings for us uh, when it comes to validation and test of the vehicle. And uh, so right now we're testing our electric motors, uh, inverters, We'll start past testing our battery systems with them, Q1 of 25, and we are targeting flight testing, uh, Q2, Q3 of 2025. And uh, if everything goes well, they, my understanding is there's you know, as much as a $100 million contract 
that uh, a purchase order for vehicles that could follow. So uh, we're excited about it. Hmm. Well, the other thing too is you're actually looking for investors as well, correct? You know, it's a great time. Uh, we just uh, putting out a, a new uh, private placement memorandum. We're just kind of closing up our seed round, you know, and uh, so we can, you know, facilitate these contracts with the Air Force, get them done, uh, you know, and uh, look towards a, a, an institutional round, which would be a very significant uh, capital raise. So we can tool up the motors, tool up production of the batteries, the aero structures. Mm -hmm. As you know, our objective is to build these at a rate of one per hour, uh, which mm -hmm. is the last time they did that was in World War II yeah. with the B-24. Mm -hmm. So we, uh, we're excited about that. So um, this is the vehicle that perhaps the Air Force and the Marines might use to, the Osprey has been grounded and I doubt very much if it's gonna be uh, moving again. And the reason that it's being grounded is because each one of the, each one of the motors uh, mm -hmm. moves. The tilt rotors, yeah. The tilt rotors. And uh, I've, I've uh, worked on that plane and that is a hugely complicated, yeah. uh, massive uh, amount of yeah. weight that's flying around. Anyways, this one here, Everything's mounted to the wing, so everything goes up and then the whole wing yeah. goes over. That makes it infinitely easier yeah. to, uh, uh, from a mechanical and electric and electronic standpoint to, to make things happen. So maybe you could uh, tell us, a, uh, I know there must be other advantages. What, what have you got there? That, well, uh, the V-22, uh, un you know, unfortunately, it has catastrophic failure modes, right? Yeah. We lose power on one of the the two engines and uh, we, we, we're, we have a, a catastrophe on our hands. Uh, one of the benefits of distributed electric propulsion systems is that we're able to distribute the load of the vertical lift yeah. and cruise components of flight. And so we could lose and we have you know, as much as 1.6, uh, you know, a thrust to weight ratio of 1.6 which is we have 60% more thrust than we need mm -hmm. to hover, to sustain a hover. So we could lose as many as a couple of motors and still arrest a descent. Whereas, uh, you know, you lose a rotor in the V-22, it's, it's, a, it's a done day. But uh, one of the other key things is, you know, we're very focused on lean design. We don't like actuation. To me, anytime you add actuators to the primary flight control system, you add failure modes. Yeah. So we wanted to go with a tilt wing configuration, which really had, it's got two actuators that stabilize the, uh, the fuselage to the horizon. Um, if we lose an actuator, uh, to, to, we actually can continue flight uh, without uh, a catastrophic scenario. Mm -hmm. Well, the one thing I like about this versus what I saw on the Osprey was the fact that this is an electric motor mm -hmm. and electric motors almost never fail. You have to really uh, put a zillion hours on these things before you see anything yeah. failing. So, so a to me, failure, well, yeah, and it is a bearing failure, but at the end of the day, you can hear that. Right. I mean, every time they, they come in for any kind of, um, uh, maintenance or whatever, that'll be the first thing they do, turn it on, listen for, it's like a stethoscope. So that makes this, um, to me anyway, uh, a much, much better option. Yeah. So I'm, I'm very excited about what's going on here. Thank you. Now, we, we see uh, troop transport in the bottom. How many, uh, how many uh, soldiers, sailors, Marines, whatever, how many could you get in that, that pod? Well, uh, with the production intent block two uh, aircraft, we're, we're looking at a 2,000 pound payload. So, you know, if we're looking at, uh, you know, six to maybe eight max, mm. uh, maybe with some, with, with, with some cargo. Uh, well, they, they're going to be coming with 40 pound packs and So let's, and call, a machine it, let's gun. call it six. <clears throat> yeah, six would be safe, six or seven. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, very good. So, uh, but the Air Force is particularly interested in, leveraging this vehicle for contested logistics, you know, getting uh, payloads to the point of need. And uh, yeah, there are some pacing threats that to, the, to the country right now that uh, they're looking for. Flexible, low cost mm. uh, aircraft systems that are runway independent, that are, um, you know, autonomous or remotely operated 
to do the job of moving things. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, here well, in the Motor City, that's just kind of what we do. Well, at the end of the day, it's a lot easier with a product like that. Yeah. Now, I can tell you that the BA609, which is also a vertical takeoff, and, mm -hmm. and the Offspray, we worked on both of them. And there are so many things that go on all the pilots say the same thing. They're a very, very busy aircraft yeah. to try and make uh, make work. Yeah. So this, I could definitely see that being autonomous. I mean, it's like a no brainer. That is simple in comparison to both the Osprey and the BA-609. Yeah. So Please. I'm... Yeah, I appreciate that, Sam. I mean, you're the, uh, you know, when it comes to lean design, I mean, you are the guru, right? I mean, and that is uh, something that went into our you know, our calculus going into this is we need the fewest number of moving parts possible. They're yeah. all direct drive motors. Uh, we're looking at uh, just under, uh, we're at like 10 moving parts on the aircraft right now. Yeah. We're, we're going to reduce that even further. Well, I, I think that there's a lot of good that can happen here. And speaking of good, I guess uh, ICAT should be, uh, ICAT Logistics should be mentioned because um, they, um, they sponsored you to uh, get you here, I yeah. guess. Well, yeah. ICAT Logistics has been a great partner. They joined us in uh, 2022. Uh, they signed a, a, a memorandum to deploy our vehicles, as many as 25 of them, in a commercial context for essentially, um, you know, let's call it uh, high value, uh, you know, urgent logistics scenarios. Mm -hmm. a lot of that happening in, in, in Metro Detroit. Uh, in supplying the automotive uh, manufacturing facilities, but they've also been um, just a great partner in supporting the movement uh, of, of the large aircraft and the ground vehicle. We certainly appreciate their partnerships. Mm. Uh, we, uh, we've got a great uh, we've got a great list of partners, and ICAT's one of them. Excellent, excellent. Well, um, I, I think that the only other thing that I I don't even know if I can mention it, but you also have the software, right? The logistics software. Where are yeah. you with that? So, so our vision, you know, when it when it comes to reimagining what transportation can look like, if you take autonomy, lightweight materials, you take electrification, and you try to reimagine how we move things, how we could collaborate ground and air robots to move things, we needed an operating system that could effectively. Uh, facilitate that collaborative uh, engagement. So we did come up with a, uh, a traffic management system. Our code name for it is Aeronet. It's an airborne mesh network yeah. that basically allows cities, states to uh, deploy this infrastructure at airports, within urban centers, heliports, drone ports, basically broadcast the rules for arriving traffic, departing traffic. It allows you to authenticate that traffic because reality is, is the future of transportation is really going skyward, right? Yeah. We're leveraging this unlimited capacity. So how do you organize that traffic? How do you coordinate that traffic? There's no stop signs, traffic lights, intersections, yellow lines in the middle of the road. How do we do that? We can't have chaos. We have yeah. to have organization. Yeah. So what we're doing is, is working with the Department of Transportation here in Michigan, the Office of Aeronautics, and WSP, our partners. Uh, we're deploying a wireless mesh network, which will have a, uh, essentially will create a mesh in an urban center where we can connect ground and air vehicles to it, authenticate traffic, broadcast those rules, prevent collisions, um, be able to broadcast no-fly zones, if you will, to do all the jobs that people want to do with drones, whether it's roadway inspections, drone as a first responder, uh, infrastructure inspection, cargo movement, and eventually passenger mobility. Mm. A lot of vehicles uh, that you're going to, different shapes and sizes doing different jobs. Yeah. How do you coordinate them? How do you mix them? Right. And they all really need to be on a common traffic frequency. And this is something that we're doing today, and Michigan has been... Uh, really had great vision uh, in, in developing and deploying connected vehicle infrastructure. And we're very proud to be working with them mm -hmm. and, um, and, our, and our partners at WSP. They're world leaders in transportation infrastructure design and engineering. And truly something that was born here in Michigan that we can scale throughout the country yeah. and around the world. So 
Super exciting. It is. It's, uh, it's, an, it's a very exciting time. Actually, the other excitement is um, <laughs> this right now is being powered by the cyber truck. Yeah. So I've, I've mentioned several times that we've had to do stuff like this where, um, you know, uh, through the day we, we ran out of juice. So plugged in over there at, uh, at 240, straight into your... And by the way, I don't know if we mentioned it enough, but this is the pod that goes into the vertical lift mechanism. This is just a carrier. That's the carrier to make it move around inside or in the airport or wherever, on the taxiway, whatever it is, this mm -hmm. will be the transport vehicle. That's so right. um, I, really, I really appreciate you bringing it down. Yeah. I, I will tell you, I'm, I haven't yet, but I am going to be buying, uh, buying into your company. Well, and uh, yes, uh, right on TV. What an hour. So yeah, so I'm well, going to be putting money in because I can't afford it when you go to the next round, but I can't afford it now. So yeah. Uh, uh, yeah uh, well, that's a, it's a great honor, Sandy, to, uh, to have you as part of our team and a part of our investor family. Uh, this is uh, certainly a, you know, a great challenge, but the, the outcome is uh, you know, tremendous efficiency yeah. when it comes to moving things. Uh, you know, clean, connected, quiet, mobility, and uh, we're well, looking I'm, forward I'm, to working with you. I'm more up for the defense of the country. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, all that other stuff is yeah. great, but at the end of the day, yeah. um, what you've got here is something that I'm here, I'm, I mean, Memorial Day is coming up. Yeah. Um, I, I, I just bought my second flag. So, at the end of the day, I'm, um, I'm very, very much yeah. into the defense of the country. And this, to me, is a really, it's a needed thing. Yeah. It's something we need. It is. And, uh, Sandy, I can't tell you that, uh, you know, we're passionate about our national security. We're passionate about, you know, improving the quality of life for people. And it's a tremendous honor to, uh, to have been selected by the Department of the Air Force. Uh, we just actually got invited to be part of the Pentagon's Mentor-Protege program. They're wow. going to be teaming us up with... Uh, folks within the Pentagon and within their key prime contractors that just came across the wire yesterday. Uh, we're going to wow. be, uh, we're now engaged with the Defense Innovation Unit. Uh, they're very keen on leveraging Michigan and Detroit's capacity to produce things at scale. And that's just what we do well. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's a great honor and uh, we're looking forward to serving. Perfect. Okay, everybody, there you got a stock tip and uh, a little glimpse of probably what the future is going to look like with, um, with ASX. Thanks so much. Thank you, John. Appreciate it, Sandy. Good luck. Thank yep. you. Thank you.